Hi guys and welcome back to Chef's Choice. Let's talk about the last batch of performances at the Eurovision concert Amsterdam, shall we? If you want to hear my impressions of all the performances, you find the first two videos as well as all my earlier reviews of the songs in the playlist up here. And if you'd like to see my future videos, just subscribe to my channel. You can find recordings of the performances that I'm talking about on the Vivi Blogs channel. I will put a link in the description below so you can make your own impression, but make sure you come back to this video, okay? Sweden. It's hard to bring across the vibe that Robin Bengtsson's performance had at Melody Festival in such a reduced version. He clearly did the best he could, but it showed that the song itself is not as strong as it is in combination with a great show. I'm sure that it will all come together again in Kiev, so I'm not afraid that it won't qualify, but it was interesting to see whether he could do it on his own or not. And he definitely has a lot of charisma and star appeal that many other acts are lacking. Ukraine. I was positively surprised by this. I'm not usually a rock fan, but being the only rock song this year, Otorwald really stand out and bring a refreshing change to the contest. They have power and the fact that they as a group are actually performing together rather than just playing the instruments on the side while the singer stands in the center alone, like Lithuania or Switzerland, makes it stand out even more. My guess is that this could make it quite close to the top 10 in Kiev. Armenia. This was another song that I was really looking forward to seeing live, because I was unsure how it comes across. And I have to say, I really loved Artsvik's performance. Her style and her voice matched the mysterious mood of the song perfectly, and she had just the right amount of sass and confidence. What I was afraid of beforehand was that the song wouldn't sound modern enough, but she smashed my doubts away with this show. I really hope she qualifies for the final, and coming close to the end of the first semi-final, the chances are not bad. Montenegro. When I saw the music video of Slavko Kalesic's song, I thought, despite the lacking vocal ability compared to other contestants and the lacking lyrical depth of the song, that Slavko as a performer could win me over. But he didn't. His character that he plays on stage seems too artificial and gimmicky. I'm sure it works great in a dance club in Ibiza or something, like I said before in my review video of the song, but I don't think the concept that he's going for will work in Kiev. It's just a fairly cheap way of fishing for attention. Cyprus. What I like about this song is that it's really catchy. As a listener you get into it from the start and know what you're dealing with and can sing along quickly. On the other hand, this also makes it boring. It's a song that could be played on the radio, but I wouldn't be able to tell whether this is a Eurovision song from 2017. I would rank this somewhere in the middle, which makes it hard to guess whether it qualifies or not. It has a good place in the running order, so let's see. France. Alma is like the epiphany of a young, beautiful French woman that knows what she wants. I could never really decide whether I liked the song or not, but seeing her on stage, she proved that she can make it work. She had the vocals under control, the English chorus didn't seem as out of place as before, and you could see that she enjoyed being the center of attention. I wouldn't have put her in my top 10 with certainty before, but since Amia last year did quite well with a much more mediocre song, I'm sure Alma will do just fine. Romania. I said this several times already. I just don't understand Ilinka and Alex Florea's concept. What's the point of the yodeling other than having something to talk about? No one will remember anything from the performance other than, oh, that was that yodel song, right? If, if you're not building a whole concept around this, the yodeling becomes just a joke. Of course it's fun, and it will bring a lot of smiles on the viewers' faces in Kiev, but I really hope they mix up the urban style that they seem to go for now with a stronger folklore touch. Having said that, they did deliver a good show in Amsterdam, so I'm looking forward to see them in Kiev. Macedonia. Just to be clear, because I got comments from both sides of the conflict. When I'm talking about Macedonia, I simply use this name to spare some time instead of having to call it former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia all the time. I'm not taking any political side by that, and I'm not trying to offend anyone by it, because for me this is just a name, and the base of the conflict around it lies deeper than the word Macedonia itself. So just out of simplicity, when I say Macedonia, I mean F-Y-R-O-M. Now about the performance. To be honest, I expected much more from this performance than I got. What was a little strange is that Jana Burcheska stopped her performance after a full minute because she suddenly realized that the backing track was the one with the vocals and not just the instrumental. The same thing happened with Albania's Lindita, but she realized it after the first couple of lines. So that was a little strange and brought the performance to an abrupt stop. What I liked about her is her quirkiness. She's beautiful and she has this cheeky smile that will work well on camera. Unfortunately, the rest of her body didn't really have the same energy as her facial expression. So even after the performance, I'm still unsure about the outcome in Kiev. 
Serbia. Honestly, when I was planning this video, I couldn't remember that Tijana Bogicevic even performed in Amsterdam. When I looked up her performance on YouTube and thought, oh yeah, I know why I forgot. Maybe she was just tired, which is understandable since th this pre-phase of the Eurovision truly is stressful, but it seemed as if she had no connection to the song whatsoever, just a machine doing her job. So it definitely didn't help to put her higher on my list. And coming first in the second semi-final, this has a long time ahead of it to be forgotten. The producers seem to think that it would be a great choice to open the show and get the people excited, but if she performs like that, it will be a slow start for the show. I wouldn't be surprised if she missed the final if she doesn't bring up her energy level for Kiev. Italy. And here we have the exact opposite. Francesco Gabani could teach Tijana a thing or two about getting the party started. This was for sure the crowd favorite. Everybody was singing at least something that sounded like Italian, even though I'm sure most of it was just gibberish. Francesco has energy and charisma and knows how to use it. I was afraid that the shortened version of the song has lost a lot of its quality, but this brought it right back up to number one for me. A lot can happen until the contest still, but right now that's the one to beat. The UK. What were you wearing, Lucy? I'm sorry, but her dress looked like she lost her luggage and had to sew a dress together in five minutes before the show and couldn't find any shoes, so she went out barefoot. It just looked terrible. And I'm really sorry to say that because I love her as a singer and she potentially has the best female ballad this year. She sang beautifully, but I couldn't focus on anything but the wrinkly dress. I hope she brings a better stylist to Kiev because the cameras will catch every detail and being a ballad there won't be any fast cuts between the different angles, so everyone has time to find the flaws. So I hope she makes sure there aren't any, because I would love to see the UK do well this time. And last but not least, the Netherlands. What a way to end the show. These three sisters blew me away with their harmonies. I was afraid before that they couldn't keep what they promised in the studio version, but their voices are pure perfection. If I have to change one thing, it would just be the hair. Probably it's just me, but I think the hairstyle is a little too overdone. But I can live with that when they slay the song like this. Of course they had the home advantage in Amsterdam, but I'm hopeful that they will convince Europe to vote for them. We haven't heard something like that at the Eurovision for a really long time, and they deserve to go high up on the list. So, that was the rest of the performances in Amsterdam. What do you think? Do you have favorite that did worse than you thought? Or someone that you didn't have on your radar before that you suddenly like? Tell me in the comments, I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you're interested in seeing what I come up with next weeks until the contest, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. And I'm always open for any suggestions of video ideas that you might have. For now, thank you for watching and goodbye.